So you're thinking about buying a neck from Warmoth to upgrade your current guitar. Well, I want to tell you something. Don't buy a neck until you watch this video. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. It's Colt here. And today we're gonna to be talking about Warmoth necks and more specifically on whether or not you should buy a neck. And for those of you who we are just meeting, let me introduce myself. I am a guitar player based here in Alexandria, Virginia. And I have a mission on becoming a great chicken picker and a great country guitar player. And they say the best way to learn something is to teach it. So I started this YouTube channel not only to document my progress of learning country music, but also to help cut through the noise and add a unique country perspective to the guitar YouTube space. The lack of dedicated country YouTube channels was the main reason I started this channel. And while I'm not the best country guitar player, or even in the top whatever percent of guitar players on the internet, I am dedicated to learning how to play country and Western music. And I wanted to share what I learned along the way for anybody else who's looking to become a proficient chicken picker and country guitar player. I also recently heard the quote, be the person who you needed when you were younger. And quite frankly, I needed a country guitar YouTuber when I was younger. And yeah, uh, YouTube didn't really exist when I was younger, but here I am trying to be those who want an edutainment personality surrounding the country guitar market on the internet. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. So chances are, if you're watching this video, you're considering either a replacement neck for your Squire or another budget-friendly guitar, or you're in the market for a new neck for the parts caster that you are currently building. Now, right off the back, if you're just looking to see if Wormuth guitars are good necks, uh, I do wanna say that they are fantastic. The quality is top notch. The playability is fantastic in the aesthetics, I mean, just look at this Telecaster. The aesthetics are just sublime. However, there are a few people I wouldn't recommend buying a Warmoth neck. And there's also a few scenarios I would recommend staying away from buying a neck from them. But we'll get to that later in the video, but first let's talk about the positives, shall we? One of the main reasons why I went with Warmoth necks was the fact that they had the seal of approval from old Fender themselves. The fact that the OG says that not only are these necks guaranteed to fit our bodies, but they're also allowing another company to build replicas of their own products, which Fender also sells replacement necks and bodies. So I think this alone is a huge positive for the Warmoth category. And it's like Warmoth is living out the old Leo Fender's vision of replacing necks when the frets wear out instead of refretting the neck. <laughs> yeah, that was his original idea for the Telecaster neck. Why, why just refret it when you can just replace it? Seems silly now, but the fact that Fender allows and approves Warmoth necks is a huge positive in my book. Positive number two. One of the most underrated features of Warmoth necks is its pre-built section. Now, it's a lot of fun to build out and spec your neck exactly how you want it, but the pre-built section uh, has a plethora amount of different necks. And I don't know if it's from those who have gone through the checkout process and decided to cancel their order or if it's helping people train or whatever, but chances are you could probably find a very close, if not an identical neck to what you're looking for on the pre-made section. And usually it's a lot cheaper. Let's say you're not too big into knowing about guitar stats and features, but you wanna upgrade that Squire neck of yours to a better playing one. Well, in this case, the Warmoth pre-built section has you covered. They have a huge selection of pre-built necks that are not only cheaper, that can also be shipped immediately, which is awesome if, you're, if your gas is acting up and you need that neck now. Also, now would be a good time to say I'm not sponsored by Wormuth, I'm just a fanboy, if you couldn't tell. Positive number three, the playability and quality are next to none. So maybe neck tone wood might or might not have effect on the overall guitar tone. Different conversation for another time. But the fact that you can get a neck from Wormuth and it be a single piece of wood that really adds to the sustainability and resonance. And that shouldn't and can't be understated here with Warmoth Necks. And I personally find the Warmoth Necks to be better than a similarly priced one from Fender. Now, if you wanna throw in a custom shop neck into the mix, I'd probably take the custom shop, but the Warmoth is a very close second, especially when we're looking at something like the Elite models or Ultra models. Is it Elite or is it Ultra? I Whatever it is now. <laughs> my Telecaster is made from a smooth baked maple piece of wood with my ideal neck shape. And the great thing about a baked maple neck is that lacquer is not required in order to seal the neck uh, due to the, the baking of the wood. You can't buy that 
from Fender directly unless you go through the custom shop. So the fact that I can get one from Wormuth is just simply fantastic. And I've probably used fantastic way too many times in this video already. Count them and let me know in the comment section below because I'm curious how many times have I said the word fantastic. It's probably a fantastically amount of fantastic. That was dumb. <laughs> So positive number four, with Warmoth, you can build both a guitar and a body. Warmoth not only builds guitar necks, but they also make great guitar bodies as well. Ranging from your standard strats and Telecasters to a PRS shaped guitar and even a Jerry Garcia Tiger inspired shape. So if you're looking to build an entire guitar, there are plenty more different shapes for you to choose from. Now my Telecaster is only half Warmoth. The body is actually from a Fender American body that I found on a website called the Stratosphere. Dot com, but the fact that you can find almost anything that you're looking for. Oh, yeah. Now, positive number five is the ability to have complete customization. Now, I think the fact that you can completely customize your neck to your exact liking is the biggest selling point for Wormuth. I've noticed that guitar manufacturers, and in this case, particularly Fender, they'll pick a certain neck profile for each series of the instruments. Take the profile from the Fender American Elite series from back in 2019. It was marketed as a modern D-neck they actually might still be using the same neck profile for the 2021 Ultra Series. I can't really remember, but they change it frequently. And unlike Gibson, which gotta give them mad props right now, whether or not you are a Gibson fanboy like me or not, their flagship models, the standard Les Pauls, come in both a 50s style neck and a 60s thin pattern neck. So if you want a Les Paul, you have options here. Unlike the Fender higher end, options. Either way, I loved everything about that Ultra Telecaster except for that dang neck. The tummy cut was comfortable. The arm cut was divine. I mean, on a Telecaster, sign me up. The pickups were spanking, but that dang neck, it just wrecked it for me. Now, this is where something like Wormuth could have solved that issue. If you buy a guitar that you don't like the neck on and it's a bolt-on, you can swap out the old neck for the new neck you just built to your exact specs with Warmoth. But there's a lot to be said about spending $2,000 on a new guitar to not like the neck and only to swap it out with a new one. Can't really justify it in my case. I, If I don't like the neck, I'm probably not gonna buy the guitar. But let's say hypothetically you broke the guitar neck the day after that limited warranty was up. And outside of the fact that you were really upset that you tried flipping your guitar around your neck today instead of yesterday when you saw the warranty, you could still replace that neck pretty easily with one from Warmoth. It's a stretch, yeah, I know, but my point is, if you wanna try new guitar neck shapes or you didn't realize you actually liked a chunkier neck, you can create the perfect neck. You guys know what I'm trying to say. I, I, the possibilities are limitless. You're probably not gonna spend $2,000 and then replace the neck the next day. I'm just saying, if you, if you needed to, Warmoth has you covered. Now, I do wanna talk about some negative things here because not everything in this world is perfect. While complete customization is the pinnacle in the positive column, I'm also gonna put it in the negative column as well. And this is more for those who might be new to guitar or guitar tankering and those who are very indecisive when it comes to gear. And the unlimited combinations can be quite daunting, especially when you're just trying to decide between a standard or a compound radius or what width of nut you need. Going through the neck build process, I realized there's a lot more to guitar necks than I originally thought. And while yes, complete customization can be a negative, it can also be a positive. So I don't want to deter you from building your dream guitar neck. Just make sure you do your due diligence, write down everything you like about a guitar neck, and then spec it out from there. I've found the best way to spec out a guitar neck is to find one you absolutely love. Find out everything you can about that guitar neck. That way, when you go to build your own new one, you can use your favorite one as a guide. At least, that's what I did when I built this Telecaster. Negative number two is compatibility. Now, this one kind of goes hand in hand with the customization side of things. And while yes, these necks do have Fender's stamp of approval, that doesn't necessarily mean every neck will fit every Fender body. And chances are, you're not necessarily buying and building a Fender neck. You could be doing one of the other models. And yes, you can customize your guitar neck to your exact liking, but you also have to keep it within limits because not every custom part is compatible with one another. Even on the first page of this custom neck builder asks you to choose your nut width. And this will very much rely on what bridge you're planning to use. Do you have a guitar body ready to go or do you need to write down the width for what you select it for so when you go to buy the bridge, your bridge and your nut will line up. Also, are your pickups the right width as well? If this is the first step in your building process, just make sure you remember that width as it'll be important 
when you go out to spec out your bridge and your pickups. And this is only the fifth option that Warmoth asks you for. I counted five other options that can make or break your perfect creation if you don't choose wisely. So this isn't necessarily a one size fits all solution. If you're planning on building your own neck, just make sure you dot your I's and cross your T's, do all your due diligence before pulling the trigger. Luckily, Warmoth foresaw this becoming an issue and created a great resource page aptly called Will It Fit My Guitar Body? This is where you can double check your creation's compatibility before checking out. Let's talk about seeing around corners here, Warmoth. Great job. Negative number three is the setup. So when you buy a guitar uh, from a store or online, they'll usually perform a guitar setup for you. They'll ask you things like, what type of strings do you prefer? Diodario nickel wound nines, please. They'll then string it up that new instrument and they'll make sure there's no fret buzz, make sure the neck isn't warped. Then they'll give you some proper intonation and then they'll send you out on your way with your brand new guitar. This is not the case when you're buying a neck from Warmoth. Actually, in fact, these two scenarios aren't even really comparable. Buying a neck from Warmoth is more like matching a guitar neck and a body during the manufacturing process at the guitar plant. On the hiring guitars like custom shops, there's an art and a science for matching pieces of wood together. For all intents and purposes, we're gonna assume that your neck and body are properly matched. And if you did your due diligence when specking out your guitar neck, they're probably gonna be a match. They might just not be set up properly with one another. Take my Telecaster here, for instance. This incredible roasted maple neck with compound radius was exactly what I needed. The heel fitted in properly and the nut and the saddles were aligned. And I was thinking, man, this is too easy. But after a few frustrating months of trying to do proper setups myself, I ended up taking it to my local guitar repair shop and got a proper setup. Now, you might be planning on having your own luthier set up your new axe when you get it and complete it. I applaud you for that forward thinking. It just took stubborn old me a few too many frustrating nights to finally pull the trigger and go see someone professional to help with my neck problem. Turns out that the nut I ordered on the guitar was too short and needed to either be replaced or shimmed up. The guys over at Atomic Music here in Falls Church hooked me up and now I have the best playing guitar in the DMV. Which leads me to my final point and let's call this negative point 3.5, the Irvana nut. Now I have never heard of the Irvana nut until country guitar player Jim Lil mentioned his Telecaster had a Buzz Featon nut which gives proper intonation all the way up the neck. Now going into this build, I knew that three barreled Telecaster saddles are notorious for improper intonation. So when I saw that Warmoth had a similar miracle nut option for their necks, I jumped at the fact that I could add a Irvana nut to my Telecaster. Now I'm not really sure what threw off the Irvana's nut height. Maybe it's the compensated barrels that I chose. Maybe it's the compound radius of the neck. I'm not really sure. Maybe one of you guys watching know the answer to the problem. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you do. But who knows, maybe it was something as simple as it was, it was improperly cut that day. Mistakes happen. So what did I learn from building my own guitar neck? Well, for one, the amount of attention to detail a guitar neck needs to work properly, let alone play perfectly, is above and beyond my initial comprehension. Learning new things about this wonderful instrument is also really enjoyable. It's almost like learning a deeper lore to your favorite video game franchise or watching the director's cut with the director commentating on your favorite movie. It truly is the little things that make this instrument so unique. And thing number two, it's given me a deeper appreciation for handcrafted instruments. Their ability to continually hit the marks when making some of the greatest guitars on earth is quite astounding. So should you build your own neck or body from Warmoth? That really depends on how far down the rabbit hole are you willing to go.